Welcome to this video that explains the use of a spreadsheet that contains Visual Basic macros that can quickly put data into different categories. There's a copy of the spreadsheet available for download through the link in the description below. So there are many different situations in which users might want to put data into different categories. An example I'm going to use to explain the spreadsheet is if someone's got a bank statement, like I've got over here, um, this is the type of data set that can be downloaded from most online banking portals. So imagine you've got this set of data and you want to know how you're spending money each month. In other words, how much on gas, how much on food and things like that. So in the first few minutes of this video, I'm going to quickly run through how the macros work just so that viewers can get a quick idea of whether this is something that they might be interested in. And then I'll go through um, again in a bit more detail, just showing a couple of examples uh, of how the spreadsheet works. So the first thing you'd have to do if you want to put things into categories is to identify the categories you want to use. So I've got a list over here of 45 different categories, which are typical categories that a household might spend money on during the course of a year. For example, there's food eating out, food groceries, uh, gifts, haircuts, things like that. So if I go back to the MasterCard tab over here and we look at the set of data, the way the spreadsheet works is you click in the cell that you want the category to be entered in. You then press Control K and it'll pull up this form. Now each of these buttons has a label which matches the categories that were listed in column A on the categories tab. And you just click the buttons and go down the list and put each item into categories. So save on foods, I can see that that's groceries. Uh, whole foods, again, that'll be groceries. Shell, so that'll be gas. So gas for vehicles, there it is. Delbrook, that's the swimming pool, so that'll be recreation fees. Um, so basically you can see this is how the spreadsheet works. You just keep keep clicking. If you want to stop, you just push cancel. And now uh, you can make some edits. You can do whatever you want. You come back. If you want to start again, just hit Control K. Staple, so that will be office expenses. That's Amazon unknown. I don't quite know what that item is. Um, if you do get to one that is unknown and you decide that you want to Come, come back later on, you can click Highlight Cell. Then it'll take you to the next row. Shop as Drug Mart, you can say that's medication. And uh, then you can come back later on and fill in all the pink categories. And that's pretty much the end of the brief overview of how to use the spreadsheet. But I'll maybe go through a couple of other features and also explain how the data uh, that you've categorized can be summarized um, to assess the overall expenses in each category for a particular time period. So perhaps let me just go ahead and um, actually finish off this sheet. So just to emphasize again, you push Control K to pull up the form. Control C might be a more logical shortcut to pull up the categories form, but Control C is copy and I didn't want to disrupt that shortcut key. So Control K is what you push to pull up the form. So this uh, would be clothing, that will be more groceries, and that will be, I'm just going to call that Amazon Unknown. Uh, cancel. I'm actually just going to get rid of this one as well. Make it no fill. And then I'm going to control C, control V, that one. Make that Amazon Unknown as well. So now that I've got all the data in this list categorized, of course, your actual bank statements might be much longer than this for a particular year. But I'm going to go back to the categories tab and I'm going to just move this little button out the way. This is the uh, button you can push to sort all the categories in column A and that's primarily if you add a new category and then you want to make sure they're in alphabetical order so that when your categories dialog box comes up you know where to look within that list of categories and there's 75 of them as you can see if you've got more than 75 categories then the spreadsheet's not going to do everything you need it to do but certainly if you do have less than 75 items you could just come to the bottom of your list, add an additional item, then click the sort by column A button to sort the data. And the next time you bring up the categories form, all of the categories are going to be pre presented in alphabetical order. But now getting back to our MasterCard data that we want to summarize for the period. So we're going to use the sum if formula. So we'll come to cell B1 over here. Go plus to start the formula. Sum if. 
Then we have to specify the range containing the labels that identify the data. And I'm going to select the whole of column E. So I click the E at the top here. Then I'm going to push comma. I've now got to select the criteria, which is in cell A1, given that I'm doing the formula for cell B1. And then I have to select the sum range, which is the range that actually contains the data that I want to sum up. So I, I'm going to select the whole of column D, and then close round bracket, and then push enter. And then I can copy that formula all the way down. So for Amazon, I've got $142.08, and indeed that looks about correct, because it's $61 plus $80. So it's not that impressive right now, but you can imagine that if I had a much longer set of data on the MasterCard tab, this would give me a useful summary of the totals in each of the different categories. So in terms of benefits the spreadsheet offers, um, I think certainly the form allows you to click items and put a particular category into a particular cell, probably much quicker than you could type it. But as well, when you use the SUMIF formula, you must appreciate that the SUMIF formula, it looks at the category labels, and unless they match exactly with the categories listed on column A, the, the, if there's not an exact match, it's not going to properly tally the items when it uses the SUMIF formula. In other words, if you called it food groceries as the category here, but then when you were going through your bank statements and sometimes you called it groceries, sometimes you maybe even called it food dash groceries. So if you if you get the name in any way different uh, between two different items that are supposed to be in the same category, it's not going to tally it correctly. But when the macro does the categories, it actually pulls the data to put on the button labels on the form. It pulls the data out of column A. So every time you're going to get exactly that data, which then gets posted into the particular cell. So in addition to being quicker to categorize, it's probably more reliable. Also, if there's up to 75 categories, you're probably not going to be able to remember all the names uh, precisely. So it's a good reminder when you pull up the categories form by pushing Control K, exactly what you call the particular form. Uh, food eating out and food groceries, for example, is maybe not that uh, easy to remember in terms of exactly you had a dash or did you have a comma or what did you have. All right, the other thing is the categories form can be pulled up absolutely anywhere on the spreadsheet. It doesn't matter where you are. You can bring it up and uh, then you can type a bunch of categories and as you go down it'll keep just putting them in. So if you wanted you could enter a new sheet. You could uh, start a new uh, in a new column. You can put it wherever you want. Then just explaining a little bit more um, some of the formulas you might need if your bank data doesn't come, like the MasterCard data came with charges shown as positive numbers and refunds shown as negative numbers. Obviously, when you use the SUMIF formula, you have to specify the categories column and then the data column. That's just a total of two columns. So if your bank gives you data in three columns, then you're going to have to adjust the data a little bit. So here, for example, I'm going to put a column which has all withdrawals as positives and all deposits as negatives. So I'm going to use the if statement to check if there's anything in here, then I, well sorry, if that's empty, then use the withdrawal figure, else use a negative of the deposit, because I want deposits to be negative. Close round brackets, copy that formula down, so now I've got equivalent data than we had on the MasterCard tab. I've basically got withdrawals shown as positive numbers and deposits back into the count shown as negatives. I can then again go and use the categories uh, form. But now you notice that the categories form is obscuring the data. And this is because the categories form will always be pushed to the right hand side of your Excel window. So there's a couple of things you can do to fix this. Uh, in this case, because I've got a small screen showing for the screen capture, I'm actually just going to narrow the size of this column. Maybe put it something like that. I'm going to click wrap and then the text will all still be visible. Now when I push Control K, it's going to be fine, except I don't want to push a category now because it's going to write it over in that cell. Keep in mind that the cell that you're in when you push Control K is the cell that the category is going to get put into, and then it's going to step down one row. 
So that would have been a mistake if I'd pushed one of these categories buttons because I would have obliterated the text that was in that cell. Anyway, so here, um, let me enter a couple of items here. Sushi, so that's food eating out. Uh, service charge, that's a bank charge. Now this is an internet transfer. This is one account to another. If I'm just transferring money, for example, to pay off the MasterCard, that doesn't impact my household expenses. And I don't want to count that transaction in any way when I do my analysis. So I'm just going to click the skip a row button. That's a check, $100, I'm not sure what it's for. So I'm going to highlight that cell and come back to it later. Ink toner, that looks like office expense, and coffee, and away you go. So uh, that, I think, explains most aspects of uh, the spreadsheet. Except, I guess, I could maybe just come to the categories tab and just show you that if you insert a row over here, because let's say that I want this to be MasterCard, and this I want to be debit card because imagine I want to compare or I want to know I want to keep track separately of the expenses on each different card well now I've got to do another sum if formula so we'll go to the debit card this time there's my categories my criteria I'm going to come back to this one and then I'm going to go back to get the numbers I want to tally it's going to be that column and then again I've got to copy it down so that works, um, and you can now keep track of the separate uh, different cards that you're making charges on. And this whole spreadsheet can be used just like any old spreadsheet if you want to get an average of data or you want to tally it at the bottom here with a sum formula. But what I want to point out is that now that we've got a blank in cell A1, you'll notice that when I push Control K, I'm going to have a blank on the first button. That just emphasizes again that every time it's just going to pull out the first 75 rows of uh, data on the categories tab column a and it's going to put those on the labels and that's what you're going to push so if i was to click that cell it would just give me a blank and it would step down it's putting nothing in there because there's nothing in cell a1 so that's not necessarily a problem but if you do in introduce a whole lot of blank rows at the top of your spreadsheet you may run out of um, buttons because you're only going to have in this case 74 categories available instead of the 75. So, all right, I think that's an explanation of the spreadsheet. Hopefully you find it useful. Thanks.